You know how the NFL ran that ad campaign before the season started that was like, check out our writer's room because the things that happen in the NFL are so unbelievable that somebody would have to script it, right? Well, no, not this year. A lot of players who were supposed to be the stars of the league are actually hurt. A lot of teams that were supposed to be good are actually bad. And uh, the refs, <laughs> well, everyone's like, I don't even want to be talking about the officiating. But they actually do want to be talking about the officiating because everybody loves to complain about everything. And refs are a common enemy, my friends. But I digress. There has been one storyline that we were blessed with from the heavens above. And this is the story of Tommy DeVito, his family, and his agent, Sean Stellato. Tommy DeVito's storyline is the kind of thing where if, if a writer were to bring this into a TV writer's room, they're like, hear me out, there's this guy Tommy DeVito, and then tells them about his life, the writers would be like, there's absolutely no way we can put this in, it's way too on the nose. And yet, in real life, it's just the greatest story we've been given in a long time. Now, if you aren't familiar with Tommy DeVito and his family and his agent, Sean Stellato, you might not believe what I'm about to tell you. If you are familiar with Tommy DeVito, stick around anyway, because I might get into some stuff you just haven't heard yet. I also have the perfect ending in mind for the sports movie that will someday be made about this guy. So if you are a studio executive or you have a lot of cash to burn, hit me up. If you are not a studio executive and you do not have a lot of cash to burn, do not steal my idea, okay? Capiche? All right. Tommy DeVito, and I'm sorry, but I will refer to him by his whole name this entire time, is currently the starting quarterback for the New York football giants. He was not supposed to be. Tommy was not even really high up in the draft. He, was he drafted? He was an undrafted free agent. Is that even being drafted? The giants took him in 2023, signed him, put him on a practice squad. Tommy's big moment came when Daniel Jones tore his ACL and was out for the season. Now, Daniel Jones, if you're not familiar with him, well, he's supposed to be the Giants' starting quarterback, and they gave him a whole lot of money in the offseason. Daniel Jones is also the guy who was once running on a breakaway and, like, just open field in front of him, and he tripped over his own feet. You know, they call him Danny Dimes because he had some good throws, but that is my favorite thing about Daniel Jones because it's something I would do. Anyway, so Daniel Jones' backup, Tyrod Taylor, was also hurt. So in comes Tommy DeVito. And I was like, did they, I'm sorry, but did they just like go down to Don Bosco and like find a high school kid named Tommy DeVito and be like, well, you can throw, let's put him in. And, and my friends, the answer is basically yes. For those of you who don't know Don Bosco High School, because unless you're from Northern New Jersey or married to somebody who is, why would you? But Don Bosco is a prep school, a private school for all boys. And their whole thing is like, you want to be in the pros? Come to Don Bosco. Not really, but they call themselves the Ironmen. So that just gives you a sense of what we're dealing with here. Tommy lost a few games, and then something miraculous started to happen. He began to win. Tom, I'm calling him Tommy. I said I was going to call him Tommy DeVito this whole time. I'm going to call him Tommy. Tommy DeVito is too hard, actually. So Tommy, he starts to win, right? He beats the Commanders, and he was sacked nine times in that game. Do you know the last time somebody was sacked nine times in a game and still won it? 1992. Do I know who that was? No. Doesn't matter. We're talking about Tommy DeVito. He also beat the Patriots, which is not hard to do. I say this as a New England Patriots fan who is dead inside. But his crowning moment came on Monday Night Football when the New York Giants beat the Green Bay Packers in a walk-off win. It's not just the winning that's getting Tommy all this attention. It's his biography and his family which are so unbelievable that it really does feel scripted. So our boy Tommy grew up in, I feel like I'm doing an Italian accent already. Our boy Tommy grew up in Cedar Grove, New Jersey, which is about four or five miles away from MetLife Stadium where the Giants play. His family is loudly and proudly Italian-American, something out of central casting for The Sopranos. And trust me, I mean that as the highest possible compliment. His parents were caught on camera at one of his games complaining about a play call. And it made me think that this is probably something they've done since Tommy was in Pee Wee or since Tommy was at Don Bosco High School because that is where he went. Tommy's family is the reason he started to go viral, mostly because a report came out that Tommy still lives at home. This 25-year-old said, quote, it's a no-brainer for me. I don't have to worry about laundry, what I'm eating for dinner, chicken cutlets and all that is waiting for me when I get there. My mom still makes my bed. Everything is handled for me. I'm going to be honest. It sounds amazing. 
Tommy also went viral when he started doing this, uh, the Italian hand gesture where your fingers are pinched after he scored a touchdown. You know the one I mean. This one's like, eh, you know, I think I think technically it's like, ma che voi, or what do you want? But it can also be, that's the stuff, or I'm Italian. It can also mean, what's wrong with you? Or I love you, depending on the facial expression that goes with it. Sometimes those are the same thing. And then his family went viral because... His dad and his agent, who I'm about to tell you about, were in the stands and Tommy scored a touchdown and they both are doing the Italian hand gesture. And then Tommy Sr., because yes, Tommy DeVito's dad is named Tommy DeVito Sr., took Tommy DeVito's agent, Tommy DeVito Jr.'s agent, and kissed him on the cheek. And then you know what his agent did? He did the hand gesture again and then he kissed his, his, well, he didn't kiss his dad. He kissed Tommy DeVito Jr.'s dad on the cheek. This was, mind you, after Tommy's family brought 300 chicken cutlets to tailgate at MetLife before the game, and those chicken cutlets came from his cousin's deli. So if Tommy's life already seemed like a movie, and he was our main character, we got the best supporting actor in Sean Stellato. Sean Stellato is a sports agent with a website that sort of looks like it might still be from 2007, but in a cool way, and has a lot of photos of Tommy DeVito on it. This guy wears fedoras unironically. He quotes Frank Sinatra unironically. And if there is any irony in there, it's very subtle because I did not detect it. Sean Stilato has four daughters, according to Instagram, because I checked him out there because that's what a good journalist does. You stalk people on Instagram. But most importantly, this guy looks like he walked out of the movie Goodfellas, which is very funny because Joe Pesci's character in Goodfellas was named Tommy DeVito. He writes children's books, uh, and this weekend he is being inducted into the Italian American National Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame. It's pretty cool. Maybe just Hall of Fame. I don't, which is it? Well, then why are they inducting Priscilla Presley? All right, okay, Sports Hall of Fame, okay. The best part of this whole story, though, is that it's not just fans who've bought in. Giant stars like Saquon Barkley are really into playing with this guy. Saquon said, with the confidence and swagger he plays with, um, you know, you, you could feel it through the stadium, you could feel it on the sideline. Teammates actually think it's pretty brilliant that Tommy lives at home, and it actually is from a financial standpoint. This guy makes $44,000 a game, which is a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money compared to how much most NFL players make who are not practice guy backup men. Also, Tommy doesn't know how long he's going to be the starting QB for. He's got to save up. He's on that rookie contract. This could, though, be the start of another story like the 49ers' Brock Purdy, who was taken last in the draft. Maybe sometimes it's the guys who weren't given a chance, who want one the most, and actually, if they're still doing it after not being given a chance, have the confidence to sustain that drive. What I love about this story is how specific it is. It's the specifics that paint it in such vivid color and give it its heart and make us feel something when we learn about it. But at its heart, it's a pretty simple story. A boy grew up and he walked into his dream. I mean, how many boys who grow up in MetLife Stadium and dream of playing in it, of whom I'm sure there are thousands, if not millions, actually get to do it? And Tommy does? Tommy DeVito and his family are raw, they're unpolished, they haven't been through years of media training, they're real people with real lives, In fact, Tommy Sr. still answers the phone when you call the emergency line for his plumbing company that three generations of his family have owned in Montclair, New Jersey. Tommy's family seems like a lot of people's families or like the families of somebody you know. Even if you're not Italian, aren't there cultural things and little traditions and and stuff that you'd recognize anywhere? And as someone married to a guy who is part Italian from northern New Jersey, I have learned the importance of a good antipasto plate and of having a guy at a deli like Cosmos in Hackensack, who you've known for 35 years, and the importance of a perfectly pounded chicken cutlet, a perfectly cooked chicken parm. It's magic. It's love. Now that I've really set the scene, let me tell you the last scene of the Tommy DeVito movie. This is what I've come up with. They're in the car. We're in the car with him. It's Tommy. He's driving. His dad's in the passenger seat. Sean Stilato's in the back seat wearing a fedora, probably pinstripes, maybe just something cobalt blue for no reason at all. Tommy's mom is in the other back seat. 
And somebody on Sports Talk Radio is talking about how this is the end of Tommy DeVito's career. Everybody looks older. We can tell it's years into the future. Tommy pulls into a driveway, into a business. We're not sure where they're going. But then they get out of the car, and we're all of a sudden in a car lot. Tommy gets out. He meets a guy wearing an ill-fitting suit whose hair is slicked back. He's a bigger guy. We see them in profile, and then we pan down as we see the guy hand Tommy DeVito Jr. a set of keys. And then we pan up, and the building behind them, which is big and white and square, on its storefront says, Tommy DeVito Ford. Cut to black, roll credits. 